All right, fellas. Uh, I went to another auction. I know you're getting sick of these auction things. So is the old lady. I spent the most I have ever spent at an auction. This time, I think I got the best deal I've ever gotten at an auction. Plus, you know, I got some things that uh, I bought specifically to resale because it is that time of year to resell these items. And I got them cheap enough to wear... I can make some money on them. Uh, before that, I got an envelope here. I figured I'd go ahead and open her up here. See what he sent us. <laughs> uh, no need to do a video on this. I'm going to go ahead and tie it in with this other one. Oh, looky there. A long-handled 7 sixteenths. A six-pointer. That is awesome. Just so you can tell the difference there. There's a regular old Craftsman. Uh, this is a USA Double V series. This is an Ace Professional. And it is just a hair longer than that Craftsman. But that's that's the real winner in the game right there. That SK. I will give this a great home. I will not tell uh, the wife that you have given me a brand new six point wrench that I need to now build a collection upon. In order to keep you and her on good terms, I'm not going to say anything about that. Well, to her, anyway. Once again, thank you. I also have another mail call here that he wanted to be anonymous. He sent me this. Yeah, these are uh, the old Eiffel pliers wrenches. This is a five jaw. It's got the needle nose. And of course, you got the regular old jaws. Nice crotch hatching on this. This is actually a really good uh, Eiffel plier set. This is the... Pipe wrench, got the old curved jaw there, grabbing the old pipers. This, actually an extender, these go in the other way. And then you can grab on the inside of a piece of pipe. Yeah, it's a nice piece. This one and this one seem to be the ones that get lost out of most kits. And it is the tubing cutter. So, mash her down, give her a twist, mash her down a little more, give her some more twist. And uh, yeah, blade is replaceable. 1951. Used to cost you six bucks back in the day. Oh, come on, honey. Put some hair around that second hole. There it is. Told you. I had to just take a deep breath. It'd be fine. If you can get a hold of one of these, uh, eBay, auctions, uh, garage sales, maybe even Craigslist, see something that looks like this, uh, go ahead and pick it up because these guys are excellent. Oh. Slotted screwdriver, you know, just in case, or pry bar, whatever, if you're fancy. Okay, first off, I got this. Um, it might not look like much, but it is a grappling hook. Now all I need is tabby boots and nunchucks, and I can be a ninja. I, I don't know what I paid for this. I'll bring the tickets out here uh, towards the end, and if you want to know better use of this. Throwing it up in a tree that's leaning, you don't want it to fall a certain way. You can grab this, grab a hold of that tree, pull this off, put a stake in the ground, tie it up, and then cut that tree and start ratcheting it with a come along or something like that to get it to not fall on a house or a shed or your dog. Uh, if you got a dog kennel, you know, your dogs. Something like that. Chicken coop. Whatever. Grab her in the tree, crank her over, and, uh, you know, don't muck up all your crap. Or kill your chickens. Alright. John Deere CS40. This is one of the things that I bought to sell. It runs. Started up, ran it uh, during the sale. This one actually has, it's got a nice bar on it. It's been used, got some oil on it, got the sprocket here on the end that uh, you can take apart and you know service so that's good she's got a little bit of melty on her but it's right there by the muffler it's supposed to melt looks like she's got a fairly new plug in her air filter she's a cleaning everything looks fine and dandy give her a little cleaning make her a little bit more presentable I bought this one for $70 and if you've been paying attention, notice that there were two scrunches there and two owner's manuals. You'd have known that I picked this one up for 70 bucks also, because it was 
$70 choice. They had two of them. I said, times by two. Took both of them. Pro Series, this one says. Same little setup. Eh, looks good. A little carb cleaner, brake clean action. You know, something that will dry fast. This one appears to have a brand new NGK spark plug in it also. So this one is a CS40 LE. The other one is just a CS40. So this one is their Pro Series. John Deere does not make these. Uh, this one says Made in Italy. So, uh, yeah, like, you got me. It doesn't matter. I don't have to fix it. Runs. Uh, this one does have a new bar on it. Uh, they both have good chains on them. Yeah, those are all nice and sharp. This one, no melty melty on the muffler. Two chainsaws, 70 bucks a piece. Out the door. Uh, no taxes. Already broke in. Good to go. I have a couple other things I'm going to put in right now that will not fit on the bench. Just not going to happen. Put that in now. Alright, here is my new jack. As you can see, still has the Napa logo on the front of that bumper there. Underneath that rubber cover. That looks great. A three and a half ton Napa Professional service jack. Uh, I think I ended up giving like 75 bucks for it. Cheap. Can't even buy a good jack at Harbor Freight for under 75 bucks. Even when they're on sale at a weekend clearance event. Alright, here's the welder. It is a Snap-on Y212A industrial MIG welder, 230 amp. It is 220 volt. It's not a 120 or 110. It does have a custom mud dauber nest. Of course, you're in the country. All your shit gets mud dauber nests in it. And this guy lived in the country. Ground cable, gas hookup. I do need a uh, argon bottle because don't have one. I would have bought one there. Uh, because it sold for $20, but they sold that before they sold the welder. And they were about to sell this welder for $50, which is why I bought it. Because I can't let somebody have a welder like this for $50. So I've gotten a battle back and forth with him. And then there was another guy jumped in, so... I think I ended up spending like 140, 150 bucks on this. It did also come with your flow meter, you know, ball, dial. Come with another torch cup, brand new, never been used. A bunch of 30 tips. It also came with a Victor Oxedlin welding tip, which he did have a Victor Oxedlin torch there. I didn't buy it because we already have one. I already have one. My dad already has one. The only one that needs one's my brother, and uh, eventually he'll get one. Does still have the Snap-on MIG gun. I've read on the internet, uh, Snap-on obviously doesn't make this. Uh, I want to say it's something like Simtech out of uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'll throw some text in here or whatever, telling you what it is. Yeah, obviously needs some wire, and needs some mixed gas. Other than that, this guy used this as a, at his shop. He died about four months ago. So this was running at least, you know, four, six, eight months ago, maybe a year, maybe a year ago. From what I was reading on this, this is actually one of the good welders that Snap-on makes. Uh, there's another brand out there called Century that Snap-on likes to rebrand because they get them dirt cheap then sell them for like $2,500 or something stupid. And those welders, apparently, according to some of the forums, or junk so Mantech or something like that out of Pennsylvania these are supposed to be really good welders they actually still make these today they just call them something different I don't know if you know the company in Pennsylvania still makes them or not and obviously you can buy all the parts for this from snap-on and pay out your ass or you can buy them from the original uh, people who made this and they're a lot cheaper yeah uh, Maybe my greatest auction purchase ever, uh, definitely this year, and that's taken in consideration that Cub Cadet I got for 140 bucks. But yeah, this thing's gonna be awesome. Can't read it down there, but it says TIG Torch TIG Ground. I heard you can run this TIG 
and uh, it does have spool gun down there for it. It didn't come with the TIG torch, TIG, didn't come with the TIG spool gun or anything like that. I'm just going to run it MIG. There's all your wire speeds and your heat, voltmeter, uh, 280 amp, 230 amp, and this is a single phase up to 230. One hour rating. It says 60% duty cycle there. Uh, I saw some shit online where there were guys claiming that you can get 200 amps out of this thing with a 100% duty cycle. Now, I'm not going to run anywhere near that with this. But even at 60% for an hour at 230 amp, uh, that's hella good. You're talking about 40 minutes. Now we got to do is weld something up. All right, and we're back. So, the moment I've been waiting for, I bought all this shit and I have yet to go through it. And I specifically did it that way so that we'd both be surprised. This guy was a mechanic, had a shop downtown, lived out in the country, so he had everything. He had, you know, country goods, he had city goods, he had shop goods, he had good tools. A lot of the stuff there was SK and Snap-on. You know, he, he did have some crap. This, this stuff right here, this has got to be junk. Yeah, it doesn't even say China on it. Um, let, let's get to another box. Burned! Uh, yeah, you can't see anything. Um, uh, let me come back. Okay, so let's go over some of this cluster we got right in front of us. First off, let's get some of this crap out of the way. Blackhawk Crow's Foot. Three-eighths, one inch. Uh, they're all there. You can see right there. All those guys are snap-on. They're all uh, SAE Allen, except for, of course, the Phillips. There on the end. Oh, there is one like number three. This is a Blackhawk. Actually, it's a number four. Blackhawk 3.8s. All snap on. Torx. Looks like there's two T45s because one of them is a tamper proof. This little guy right here, uh, the auctioneer guy just kind of threw it at me when I bought a can. Or no, actually, I bought this rail right here. When he thought it went on that rail, he chucked it at me. It turns out it was actually a Torx. But yeah, it'll fit on there. This little guy right here is a Mac Swivel. Uh, 7 sixteenths, quarter inch. These are all snap-on. He's got some here, 9 sixteenths. A couple 12 points, a couple 6 points there. 3 eighths, half inch, 7 sixteenths. And then this guy is a 7 sixteenths, quarter inch also. But these all right here are all 3 sixteenths. These right here. All quarter inch. The only 3 8 ratchet I picked up. Junk ass, uh, soon to be bottle opener. But, a uh, little story about this guy. I did have to use this to take apart the jack handle. And take apart some furniture that my mom bought. Yeah, I eh, actually used it. Uh, it didn't work well, but it worked. Got this guy right here. This is called a Wisdom. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's called Wisdom. Uh, this is a push button spinner on the top. Half inch drive. Uh, you may notice this looks a lot like those newfangled, stronger 3 8 snap on ratchets. Uh, the old ones look like this. See the difference there? The head of this ratchet has the ears on it instead of the ratchet handle having the ears on it. Yeah. So, another non-original snap-on idea that uh, everybody loves to pay for. Now, this here, Wisdom, I don't know if it's USA made or not. Uh, it says up here, Twin Paul. It does have a quick release. It is detented. But uh, other than that, not sure a whole lot about Wisdom. So, I'll do some looking up on them. But uh, if you guys know anything about them, Throw them in the comments. And no, this is my ratchet. I didn't get it at the auction. The snap-on ratchet I got at the auction was this little guy right here. Hard handle plastic. Roto head. Still works. 2003 model. I love that roto head. Best ratchet in the world. 
I did pick up an Industro and uh, we are going to take this apart see if it looks like that Proto. Yes, I did pick up a couple SK ratchets. This one right here, S.K, made by Facom. So, after 80s. S-K, made before SK Wayne. Note the patent number. And uh, if you look at them, they were made in the same plant the whole time. Whenever Facom bought out SK, some of this stuff they shipped over from France, like some screwdrivers and some other non-essentials. Uh, but all their sockets and wrenches and that kind of stuff stayed USA manufacture. And there was a three-quarter inch metric set that I saw that was actually made in France. But, um, you know, you're not even picking up 200 bucks on those French sets of SK sockets, even on eBay. Only subtle difference, and this may change with the new ratchet kit, is this guy right here, shallower, taller. This guy right here, fatter, shorter. Other than that, there's no difference in those ratchets. You guys don't understand how much beer it takes to put on one of these auction videos, set this stuff up. This socket right here, took a picture of it, sent it to a buddy of mine. Uh, he said, what is that socket? Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking it's spark plug socket though, but it could be for chainsaw, small engine, something like that. Driver handle here, Blackhawk, USA. A lot of the Blackhawk stuff back in the days was USA made. This is quite the uh, heavy duty contraption there. Most drivers today look like this, like this guy. See that little bitty tip down there then? This thing is uh, B fee. And it actually takes 5 16 bits. I tell just by looking at her. Let's uh, tell by fingering her. Oh, damn. It won't fit. It doesn't fit, you must have quit. Whereas this guy right here, as you see, it's a Apex. And as a matter of fact, this Apex was made in Dayton, Ohio. Apex, USA. I never hear that shit anymore. This guy right here, uh, I found the sockets to it. Stephen S. Walden Incorporated, Worcester, Massachusetts, uh, USA of course, a 3118 spinet handle. It does have the old ratchet friendly end. There's a few Walden sockets that I believe come with that. All these damn sockets, 316. But they're all Walden sockets. What do you want to do next? Let's go with these guys right here. Uh, one thing I noticed about this guy digging through all his tools here. He liked to buy different sizes and uh, he had a few different toolboxes there so I think he'd get pissed off walking from one side of the shop to the other and uh, he'd just go ahead and buy another socket that he needed. So not always in sets. Just like right here is 12 point sockets that are SK. It's got a half inch, couple three eighths, a uh, five sixteenths, and an 8 millimeter, all 12 point. He also has this magnetic 5 sixteenths, yeah, drill driver. Couple SK extensions here, quarter inch, perfectly usable. Got this set of craftsmen right here, they're all metric. They all have the uh, hashes on the top there, these are V series. These are all KD sockets, all SAE. These sockets right here, they don't have any name on them, they got a couple of dots, and then, you know, like this one's a 9. But they're all E-Torques. I don't know who makes them, but you know, e torques. All these sockets right here, these are all SK. Some of them are old. There's an S K. And some of them are still old SK tools. They're all quarter inch and they're all six point. And they're all SAE. These guys right here, they're all SK, SAE, and they're all deep. All these guys right here, they're all deep snap-on, like 11 30 seconds and 9 30 seconds, 3 16 and 9 16 Two of my favorite sockets. One thing this guy had was a 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter, I think, in every size. 10 millimeter impact semi-deep, and also the uh, cute little quarter impact wobble. Isn't that cute? Bam. 
quarter inch semi deep swivel. Impact rated. 14, 10, 7, 6, and 3 16 semi deep chrome. Six point snap on. Got the weird little Chinese set here. All these guys right here are all overseas, you know, and essentially junk sockets because they are that old. Like, uh, you know, the old Taiwan. Uh, this one right here is an old trade. Does not say USA on it because I do believe this is either Taiwan or Chinese. But it did have that guy right there. Sri Lanka. I don't think I've ever had a Sri Lankan socket before. But uh, I have one now. These guys right here, there's some interesting ones in here. Short little guy. 7 16 It is a uh, six point. No name on it, but it does say USA. It is not a uh, hex socket like I thought it was going to be whenever I first saw it. I'll make sure I pick that mark up. There's an SW inside a circle. Uh, I have never seen that mark before. And this does not say USA. It does not say China. No Taiwan. It's a 12 point socket. 7 16 Two little dashes there. SW inside the circle with tails coming off the top and the bottom. Also a couple dashes there. So, mystery socket. Old right socket there. 7 16 Thorson. You see guys right here. Matco. 5mm, 4mm. They are actually USA. That's weird. The name on it there is Pro America. 4209 part number USA. It is a 932nd. That's a good name right there for a tool company. Pro America. 38s. I do not think I have a 6mm 38 swivel. So this will actually go towards my set uh, that I need because I think I only go down to like 8mm. So, yeah. Score. It's an SK 38s. 6 point 3 inch swivel. 3 eighths on both ends. All these guys right here. Junk. A few extensions here. Blackhawk, Blackhawk, and Taiwan. There's an SK 3 eighths to half inch. This is a snap on Wobble Plus. An SK 1 and a half. A little snap on there. A couple Craftsmans. These are all SK. That is a Husky 10 millimeter. That is a Stanley Professional. Stanley Professional, made in USA. There's another one of those KD sockets. Eastco. Eastco is a good USA brand if you can find them still. It's kind of one of those new old stock things, kind of like Bonnie, where they don't make them anymore. Kind of like Allen, kind of like Armstrong. They're just an older company. Uh, they were good in their day. Still good today. Although... You're not going to be able to warranty them because you can't warranty them. They don't make them anymore. This guy right here is Blackhawk USA 12 point. These guys right here are both Blackhawks. These right here are all SK and SK Wayne. These are all three quarter inch. All three quarter inch, all six point. Or, you know, 19 millimeter if you're in a pinch. Now this is actually pretty cool. This is a crew line. It's a 5 eighths. It's a 12 point spark plug socket. And we got the uh, SK swivel. 13 sixteenths, an SK swivel 5 eighths, and another SK 5 eighths swivel, all spark plug. Proto Challenger, Craftsman, this guy right here is kind of cool. It is a 13 millimeter snap on magnetic, and if you watch here, that magnet goes in. Yeah, a little bit of the in and out, a little bit of the back and forth. Nifty. It's actually a 1997 socket. Now there's a Granco 3 8 12 pointer. Granco, it's not a name you hear very often either. Uh, they make a lot of military stuff or military grade. Snap on 3 8 Challenger. This guy right here, I could not find a name on it. But uh, I use this socket to take apart some stuff. It's about a 3 8 or 10 millimeter. 8091. That's the only thing it says on there. 
It has a roll pin punched through it. Snap on 12 millimeter. Snap on 12 millimeter. Here's a three quarter Mac impact. It's had the, uh, you know, ground the rough edge off of the top there. Got an old Bonnie socket there. Old Proto Challenger. Mac. 9 sixteenths. All of these guys right here are snap on. And they are all SAE. I bought that set of cobalts because I didn't have any deep oil SAE 3 8 Now I got a set of snap on deep oil 3 8 So we'll see how the cobalt stack up to the snap ons. Made by the same company, different name on the socket. So junk Chinese half inch 3 quarter uh, proto. It's like half inch to 3 quarter. Oh, that's 5 8 so that's an old proto right there. Half inch to five eighths. Snap on impact swivel. The Mac, uh, this is a chrome, well it looks chrome. I'm sure it's an impact swivel. Couple no name, couple of snap ons here. It's 13, half inch six point. There's old right socket. Here is a Pens Corp, manufactured USA, P-E-N-E-N-S, C-O-R-P, five eighths. And it's got the custom grind on there too. A couple of protos, 10 millimeter, 12 point. Snap on impact extension, note the hog ring. And then a junk Chinese half inch extension. Back here we have SK, Industro, and Craftsman. All 10 inch. Have a couple 6 inches here, one Craftsman V series, one SK. And then we have the big mamma jamma, the 18 inches. Yes, I checked. And it is also an SK. Ah, oh, beer me. Alright, a few more things. I did pay special for this hammer. It is a Kleins, of course, Main USA. I think it's a rebranded Nupla fiberglass. Same thing with these. Um, I think they were probably originally branded SK because of the handles. But after some brief brushing there with a wire brush, I don't see anything. So, But fiberglass telltale sign that they were probably Nupla, which is a U.S. company, make great hammers. This bag here has got a few grinding wheels, lots of different drill chucks, some uh, air chucks. Yeah, all just all kinds of a hodgepodge of stuff. There's even some air tape in there. Ended up being in one of those boxes that I bought that was in there. Old brake line, it is good. I guess you can clean it up, but the old fittings, those are the most important part because they may not have those anymore at a parts store. I've run into that a couple of times. Old power brushes for pipes and stuff like that. Yeah, get your ends all nice and shiny before you can solder them. I also picked up these. Uh, these were the only wrenches I bought, and they're all SK. I think he had two sets. But, of course, I don't have a whole set. Be checking these guys and trying to fill that stuff in. And these are, actually, the wrenches that whenever I worked in manufacturing, uh, these are what the maintenance guys carried around almost exclusively because uh, they were on their belt. Uh, open end, quick. Socket end, flex. And... SK makes them. Uh, I think Snap-on makes them. Uh, probably even Proto. Or Mac. So, they're called Saltus wrenches. S-A-L-T-U-S. Uh, that's the name of the German guy who invented this kind of wrench. I also bought a box of uh, air hammer bits. These, if you read them, they're all Snap-on. So, guys are supposed to be guaranteed for life. Got quite a few chips. That one's been blunted hard. Throw it on the wrench and uh, get that nut to moving. That's some kind of weird quacker and um, it does not say snap on on it. Not sure exactly what that is but old duckbill looking like thing. This cutter right here has been broken. There's another one of those. Duckbill looking like things. Made in USA. A few different air chisels there. Like I said, uh, all of them except for these two right here. These Duckbill guys. 
or snap on. I did nab some more pullers, a uh, steering wheel puller. This one says Stowe, Ohio. So I don't know who made these for Matco, but uh, probably really easy to find out who. Steering wheel pullers, always nice to have. Got another big snap on. Just smooth. There's a couple of those uh, big old nuts. These don't say snap-on on them. They say Torque Tools International Incorporated. It's a torque out. Three-quarter inch. They are actually made in Kenosha, Wisconsin, though. There's another one of them, but it has a different end. Here's another different puller. Doesn't have a name on it. Kind of interesting. There's another snap-on. There's another forcing screw steering wheel puller. That one's actually KD. Another weird looking little setup there. And then this is an old SK Tools. This jaw right here matches this jaw, but this doesn't say SK Tools on it, so I don't know. Same exact jaws though. Then we get into kind of the junk box, which doesn't always have junk in it. This guy right here is a reamer. It is a KD also. Another one of these guys. I, I got so many of these. I have a couple of grease gun attachments here. A couple of wire brushes. There's some pipe dies. A couple different sets. Some old grease pens. Hone. It's got new stones on it. Oh, that one lug nut. 12 by 1.5. Been missing that. So right here is a Mayhew roll pin punch. It is a huge roll pin. A uh, little Lyle hose clamp, and transmission line or fuel line, or whatever disconnect. It's a Sandvik. It's a bimetal, 14 teeth per inch. So, made USA. That'd be a nice little blade. Throw in the Milwaukee bag. Uh, this right here says snap on 18 millimeter. I'm guessing, and I'll take this home and check, that uh, this is for compression testing. Here's an old Jacob's Chuck. Might be hosed. We'll see. Ultra Black. That's still good. This clear silicone, however, is junk. And a small Felpro. Black RTV there. Ah! Got some oxycetylene files. Tip files. Yeah, it looks like they're all there and only a couple of them are bent. Now the old fuse puller back in the day. A couple of wrenches here go for like uh, grinders, other kind of stuff. And a go fast or go home knob. That was all in this auction. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe, love, hate, hard dogs, forge, gmail.com. Don't send me any panties because they never fit. Okay, now for some of the prices here. Uh, hammers, those were those SK or Nupla ones, the two small ball peens. Um, three bucks, I got two of them, six bucks total. Wire welder snap on, 150 bucks. Uh, this driver set, choice, that was those two half inch SK ratchets. Uh, 10 bucks a piece, got both of them 20. Snap on driver, that was that. Actually, only paid 15 bucks for that little quarter inch roto head ratchet with the uh, hard black plastic handle on it. The Napa Jack, 75 bucks. John Deere chainsaws, two at 70 bucks a piece for 140 total. Seven bucks for the grapple hook. So I can be a ninja. Uh, nine bucks for one of those rails of sockets. I think those were the torque sockets that were snap on. Twelve fifty for the Blackhawk crow's feet. Uh, the chisels, the box of chisels, was four dollars. Um, that also had that half inch Aircat wrench in it, impact wrench. Box of miscellaneous sockets and extensions. That was that big box that just had a bunch of crap in it. Uh, Twenty bucks for that. SK wrenches. Those are those Saltus wrenches. Uh, Twenty-two fifty. Can of sockets, that's almost what all of the quarter inch stuff was in, was that can. A bunch of SK stuff in there. It also had those uh, snap-on semi-deeps. Snap-on gear pullers, six bucks for that whole box of snap-on pullers. The Matco pullers, I believe that reamer was in that box also. The hone, that small hone was in there also. And all in all, it was a total of $504.50. Most expensive auction I've been to this year. 
Probably the last auction I'll get to go to again this year.